Thanks, everyone. Um, I see some familiar faces, maybe from the sketch noting one. Um, can I suggest that you maybe try sit more this side? So I'm not going to be using PowerPoint a lot. I'm going to be using those posters. So try sit kind of closer that side. It looks like there is some space. Okay, and then, oh sorry, let me maybe just move, maybe we move this closer. Okay, awesome, thank you so much everyone. So today we are going to get creative, we are going to make stuff, and I'm really excited to have you all here. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Talia. Um, I'm a scrum master, agile coach, and then I also sketch. So what happened a couple of years ago, about five, six years ago, I started sketch noting just for fun. And I started a blog called The Sketching Scrum Master. And I started posting my stuff and it was really, looking back now, I've grown a lot. Uh, so I started and it, you know, it wasn't uh, great. And people started contacting me and saying, how much do you charge to come and uh, sketch for us at our conference? And I was like, I don't know, is that actually a job? You know, so I had to go figure it out. So organically, I've built up a graphic recording and sketch noting uh, business, but my kind of roots are in Agile. So this technique of making posters, I use all the time when I work with teams. And I think it's a really great skill especially if you are a scrum master, um, agile coach, uh, even on the technical side as engineers, I think often, you know, it's really great if you can brainstorm and draw things together as a team. So by the end of the session, you're going to have posters that you have made, and I hope that you'll feel more confident to go and make posters um, in your teams. Okay, how many of you are kind of scrum masters or coaches? Okay, cool, quite a few. How many are kind of engineers or architects? Okay, and other, what other roles do we have? Product? Man okay, cool. So yeah, so I think this technique you can kind of use for anything, um, and I hope that you guys have an awesome time today. Um, okay, so here's our agenda here. So I'm going to start off just setting the context in terms of why we use posters, why we use visual thinking. I think those of you who attended my workshop on Thursday, the sketch noting one, some of it is familiar, but it, it's very different when you're drawing on large scales. So a lot of what we're learning today is just getting comfortable with the stationary layout and actually doing it. So. So yeah, okay, so why types of posters, what we need, so we're going to talk about the stationery. I bought a bunch of stuff here from South Africa, um, layout, text, pictures, peoples, people, frames and flags, shadows and colors, and then I'm going to end off with tips just if you are interested how to kind of get started. Okay, awesome, so let's go. Ooh. Sorry. Can I not walk there? Okay. First slide. Unfortunately, I can't use a clicker, but I really like this because it's super like uh, tactile. Okay, so why do we use uh, visual thinking? And this is quite different from the sketch noting. So sketch noting is for you. It's for you to learn. If you share it with other people, great, but it's more of a process of your learning and understanding. When we draw for other people, it's quite different. So when we draw for other people, it helps with engagement. So, you know, the only problem with PowerPoint is you can't draw on it. I think they'd be a bit angry if I went and started drawing on that screen. So it can really help because it's tactile, it's engaging. People aren't on their laptops, there's no barrier to entry. So if you're running in-person workshops, it's a really awesome engagement tool. It also helps activate different modes of learning. I forgot to mention there are booklets on your table if you do want to follow along and take notes. Uh, a lot of it follows this process. Okay, 
it also activates different modes of thinking, right? So it helps you think creatively, it helps you think strategically, it helps you think kind of operationally or practically as well. Did you know that if you use visuals, you can actually reduce meeting times by up to 24%? Why do you think that is? Focused, definitely. So it gives you kind of like a focal point, right? Especially if you're like around a, a whiteboard and you're kind of sketching things out together. Sorry, okay. Yes. So, Go ahead. Well, I, I read this, uh, this, uh, this metaphor that when you, when you give somebody a document and they have to read through it, imagine having a 100 uh, kbps line uh, between that document and your brain. That's, part, that's how fast information is reversed. But when you give somebody an art, the like suddenly 100 kbps will become 100 kbps. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting, right, that? So when we learn to read and write, if you think of like a letter A, what happens in your brain is that letter A you see as a picture. So it only has value because your brain is looking at that pattern, that picture, and saying, okay, that's an A. So when you read, they're like all these steps that's happening to process those letters. When you see a picture, it's 60,000 times faster for you to understand, because it doesn't have to translate, it knows what it is. Yeah, so it's super powerful from like a, a, a learning kind of a cognitive perspective. Yeah. So it's a lot more engaging and uh, it's kind of incremental, so you get the visual of you know, what's, what you could expect rather than just showing something to you. Yeah, cool, so it's engaging and it's incremental. And this is where the magic is. If you are comfortable and confident to draw in front of people, it's way more memorable. And you'll see, I'll, I'll chat about it now, but this, this poster, I'm not drawing on it, so I can use it again, uh, but you'll see throughout, I'm going to draw as we go. Okay, so it can help reduce meeting times. It activates four modes of learning, read, write, visual. People say about 65% of people are visual, uh, visual learners, so someone in your team is, is a visual learner. Um, auditory, and then kinesthetic, especially if you can encourage people to pick up a marker and draw as well. Okay. It also becomes a shared record. So we're actually having a, a conversation in the hallway track, what's it called, outside, about how awesome it is to draw on whiteboards, but the challenge is sometimes you have to erase it or whatever. So with flip charts, what I love is you can actually roll it up and take it with you, so that if you have a follow-up conversation, you've got it. You can also just take a photograph of it. Um, so the slides, I don't have many slides, I'm gonna take photos and just pop them in a document for you, and that becomes the slides. Okay, so it becomes a shared record, especially if you're having a conversation together, people will remember kind of what it means. And then lastly, it helps also with big picture thinking. So how many of you sometimes just feel so like overwhelmed with something, especially work, you're just like, there's so much happening. And if you're able to just get it out on paper, um, it can feel a lot more manageable or you can see things that maybe you didn't see before. So, especially with this workshop, it's about kind of tapping into that for you and for your teams. So, trying to solve problems and look at possibilities together. Okay, awesome. I'm scared to walk in front of the speaker. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, you see. Okay, maybe I must move my agenda and stationery so I don't have to walk back and forth. Okay. Maybe I should ask for a volunteer to move our stickies for us on our agenda. Okay, so that's why. The next thing that's important is different, different types of posters, right? And you'll see, like, these two are pretty much, I'm just giving you information, okay? So you can have posters to show something. That's where you've already planned all the information it's almost like a PowerPoint slide. You're not drawing on it, you're not interacting with it. Um, you can have posters to teach. I will actually draw on this. 
So if you're teaching Agile, you could prepare a poster, or if you're teaching anything really, you could prepare some of it so it looks awesome. You could draw kind of some of the information and then live in front of people. So this, I mean, you've got the scope, time, cost, quality, you know, that iron triangle. So you could draw the triangle before and then in front of people, you can actually just draw on it and make notes. Okay. So that's quite nice. It's like you can prepare before, but then you're also drawing live. I have a lot of those uh, here that you'll see. Okay, cool. So that's kind of teaching. That's giving people information. You also have posters to facilitate. So you can have like a header and you can have maybe a space for people to give ideas if you're brainstorming. Um, if you're facilitating like a retrospective, uh, you can do check-in activities. You know, so you can get people to actually give you and gather information. And then you could set it up also to sort it. So you could kind of have sticky notes on here, and then you want to maybe group them and sort them. Oh, this marker's dry. You know, so then this is kind of just brainstorming. This you can actually start to sort into some kind of structure. So if you think of like a retrospective, like a stop, start, continue, you're already kind of starting to sort that information. Okay, happy. Easy so far. Okay. So. One of the trickiest things with the post, yeah? So, Yes. So, graphic recording is kind of different in the sense that um, I would put it more here, but I haven't really covered it um, just in terms of you just visualizing the content. Yeah. So graphic recording is more similar to like sketch noting. So as people are talking, you kind of documenting the conversation. You're documenting it with pictures and with words. Um, posters, I feel like the real value for this is for collaboration and for facilitation and training, you know, so when you try to engage with people, I would use posters. I do, so like as a graphic recorder, I sometimes have like a really big uh, piece of paper and I'll do it like that, but all I'm doing is just summarizing the information. Okay. Cool. Okay, so what you need ideally is um, a black or a dark marker or a dark color. Um, and I've brought a whole bunch of markers from South Africa. Um, they have a chisel tip on the one side, so like a wedge tip uh, on the one side, and then they have like a smaller tip on the other side. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys when we start the practical to come up and select some markers for your team, um, and then, you know, we can, we can chat about it. But you need kind of a black or a dark marker. One color is enough. Especially when you're starting out, you don't need 30 colors. It makes life very complicated. And a gray pencil, we're going to talk about color later, so I'll touch that later. And then ideally you want a flip chart. When I started, I was drawing on a table. So there's no kind of, you can start by drawing on the floor or drawing on a table. That's fine. Uh, if you get more serious, I would say invest in a flip chart or use a flip chart at your office. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're actually going to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do point by point and we're going to do activities in between because otherwise I think we'll run out of time. So we're going to build up posters together, okay. Okay, so layout. I covered this in kind of uh, the sketch noting one, but for posters... It's quite different because you've got to think about what is your poster doing. Are you just going to be filling the whole thing with information or are you going to be leaving spaces for activities? Okay, so for example, if you, let's say you've got text, you'll do like a, a border around it 
Then you'll have other text. You know, so you can kind of just put text like that. Otherwise, you're actually going to leave this empty. So often you can just prepare like a heading. I would um, suggest also bringing in some kind of visual uh, and then giving it a border. Um, you know, so those are kind of easier. Um, if you're doing something that you want to kind of sort information, you can also divide the page up. You know, so you can divide it diagonally or you can divide it horizontally. Um, sometimes, so say for example, you've got three columns like a stop, start, continue. Uh, your layout may be better to do your flip chart um, landscape because then you would essentially have three columns like that. Okay. So, what I want us to do is in your tables, maybe groups of two to three people, um, I want you to think of, of like an idea. So, uh, either it's a facilitation technique or it's a concept that you want to convey. Think of something that might actually be useful in your environment because then you could actually use it when you go. Um, so brainstorm an idea and then start kind of playing around on your A4 piece of paper. Okay, so start playing around in terms of what is your idea, kind of what would that layout look like for that idea and sketch it out on the A4. Okay, I think I'll walk around and bring some markers as well. But for A4, you can even just use a pencil or any marker. It doesn't have to be big now. Okay, so get into groups and then come up with kind of what, uh, what you want to do. If you need inspiration, I'll put up a slide with some ideas. Okay, I'm going to give you five minutes, so don't get too precious about it being perfect. Just come up with something that you think will work well as a poster. Okay, five minutes. Can I just play? Can I just play music on here on the speaker? What should I ask him? Mm. Oh, I could have done it through the laptop. This one's there. <laughs>
Okay. So remember at this point, all you're doing is at a high level, what do we want to do? And kind of how would the basic layout be? Don't worry about pictures and borders and detail. Yeah. Cool. Um, I noticed some of you are uh, doing an individual one. That's absolutely perfect. So I'm sure there is more flip chart paper we can get. Otherwise, you can work in a team. Okay, so at this point, all you've got is a high-level plan, okay? So kind of how would you divide your paper up? Is it in four horizontally? Is it in two? Is it diagonal? Where would your title? You know, it's a high level. We're going to add pictures and all of that as we go. So don't worry about that. Okay, uh, one thing to note, but uh, yeah, okay, let me mention it later. Okay, cool, so what we're gonna do is when you start with posters, you always, yes? This, a picture, yeah. So I usually kind of leave space in the layout so you can add little pictures and visuals. We're also gonna add borders and frames, so that's what I wanted to mention. <laughs> So remember to leave like a lot of white space. Um, but I'll chat to you about it now before we start the text. I'm so scared of the speaker. Okay, cool. Okay, so text, text you add first. So it's almost like building a house. Your text is your foundation. Um, and the reason you do that is because then you know how much space you have for everything else. Um, and then you also know kind of what pictures and that will work well with the text. Um, so those of you who are in the sketch noting one, you'll notice with all of my headings and that, I have quite a lot of fun with the, with the text. But I don't necessarily do it all over the poster, otherwise it gets very busy. So I would suggest you come up with like a fun idea for the title text. Um, if you can also link it to what you're doing. Um, you know, so if you, someone's doing lean coffee, so if you're doing lean coffee, you know, can you do like a coffee in a little uh, coffee cup or, you know, so try and link it to the content. Um, okay, so when you're doing, I'm just gonna cover normal text first. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. So when you're writing just with normal kind of body copy or your normal text. Uh, one thing to remember is if you imagine kind of five sections. Remember at school when you first learned to write and then you had, I can't even remember the correct way, but I'll teach you for drawing so other people can see. So when you're writing, what you want to do is the top line will be for your A sender, the bottom line will be for your D sender. Okay, so letters like A are fine because they don't have anything that hangs down or that goes up. But something like B, so basically the body of your letter is big, but your things that go up or hang down aren't very long. Because if you're writing a few lines, those things then take up a lot of space. Um, so it would be kind of like that, C, D, again, you've got something that goes up, and then like a J. So basically, you're keeping the body of your letters big and bold, and you're keeping all the things that hang 
very small or that go up very small. Okay, that helps it to be more legible. Because sometimes if you write and it's like your letters are very squished like this, it's hard to see from far. So remember, you're drawing, actually, you're writing so that people can see. Okay, easy. Capital letters are great for headings. What happens is actually, um, if we write, I'm going to write in small and then show you. So when we write with small letters, your eye actually, you know, can follow these indents and curves. It's easier to read with, with normal uh, letters. With capitals, it's actually harder to read because you can't see what's a J or a D or a, but it's great for titles. So if you write in all caps as a natural writing, it's fine, but writing in small letters is actually easier for people to, to read. Okay, serif font, um, so you can write kind of in like a cursive or like a scribbly font, um, either like full-on cursive, or you could kind of write and separate. Um, the thing is with a chisel tip, you've got a very long, thick uh, line. I'm actually going to give you markers now. So you've got a very long, thick side. You've got a medium side. And then you've got the tip. So when I write with a chisel tip, I can decide how thick I want it. So it's almost like having three markers. Um, I can write like this which is the thickest side. Just excuse, this wall's going to give me bumps here. I can write on the medium side, or I can use just the point. So I've actually got three different thicknesses with a chisel tip. It also makes your handwriting look really neat. So even if I'm writing just normal uh, text, what you do is you hold the long edge. So if you're writing with the longest edge, you hold it at, if you're looking at a clock, you hold it at 9 o'clock. Okay, so this long edge I hold at 9 o'clock, and when I draw, my marker doesn't turn. My hand just moves. And what that does is it gives you this, when you go to the side, it's thinner, and when you go up and down, it's thicker. So when you're holding it, I'll maybe I'll repeat it when I give you guys the markers. So there's a, a very long edge. That long edge will point or let's say it's like horizontal to the ground. Okay, so you'll hold it so it's horizontal to the ground, and it stays that way. I don't turn the marker when I'm drawing. Um, and then when I write, every time I go down, it's going to be thick. Every time I go kind of horizontally, it's going to be thin. And then when I go down, it's going to be thick. It takes a lot of practice, but honestly, this changes your handwriting completely. It makes it look a lot neater. And it gives you a style, you know, it gives you like this awesome kind of font and it's just to do with the marker that you're using. And the reason I say this is because with the calligraphy font, actually, I kind of also do that. So I'll sketch it out first and then either I'll go back and kind of manually like color it in. But if I've got a chisel tip, all I do is I trace over it again with the point and then when I go down, I just, you know, I press on the on the thick side. But that's practice, right? So you can actually do calligraphy with a, with a chisel tip. So every time you go down, you're using a thick side, and then when you go up, it's using the thinner side. Okay, you're going to practice now. Okay, and then you can also do bubble letters. So what I would suggest with bubble letters is do it in pencil first, and then just trace kind of around it. Or you can even plan your bubble letters in pencil. Um, so here I've got like, hello. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add kind of almost like a border around that and just try to keep it equal distance from the pencil. Then it should work out evenly. But have fun. You know, think about your company. Is there like an inside joke? Think about your con like the context of what you're doing and try... Have fun. And when in doubt, just use normal capital or normal writing and just make it extra thick. Okay. Cool. So can I ask maybe that you come up, 
have a look at the markers. I'm going to, um, you can each kind of grab the colors that you want. Look for one dark one. Don't write in yellow. No one's going to see it. We'll use the colors afterwards to add color to it. So you're looking for like a black or a dark gray or a dark blue, um, something like that. Okay, so if you're in groups, one of you can come up. Otherwise, if you individually, you can come up. So how many for each group? So just, I think just get like, yeah, like a dark, actually it's a good point. Okay, so maybe grab a dark color, grab a light gray or a gray, and grab one or two kind of other colors. You don't need 10 colors. And if you need, you can always come get more. So dark color or black, a lightish gray, and another color. I like yellow, it's the most forgiving. Okay, so there's a question here, do you use the side with the grid or the plain side? I actually don't mind. So it's up to you. Our flip chart paper is different. There's no grid at all. So if you want to, you can practice on the side now with the grid. Uh, but I would encourage you kind of in future, you don't need the grid. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm going to give you about, how long do you need? Ten minutes? Okay.
Okay, so remember you're just adding the text, you're going to start with title and then if you have other text and you're going to use pencil maybe to plan your space. Okay. You don't need to add borders or anything now, so you can just do the text. Thank you. 
Okay, so just remember you're just adding text for now. You're kind of planning, leaving some space. Awesome. Okay, I think most people are done, so I'm actually going to move on. You guys are, um, you guys are quick. Okay, so you can use pencil on your big poster to just space plan, okay, where are things going. Um, but for now, we're just doing the text. Um, so does everyone have the text on there? Can I get a whoop whoop? Does everyone have the text, just the writing? Okay. Okay, perfect. Then I'm going to move on. Okay, so next up, now that you've got your text, I keep losing my markers. <laughs> it's going to make an interesting video, this. Okay, so now that you've got your text, and the thing is, the more you do this, you'll realize you must just leave space for things, right? Okay, so now we're going to chat about pictures and people. So, for those of you who were in my workshop uh, on Thursday, this is going to be familiar, um, but that's fine. You get another chance to practice. Okay, so when we think about pictures, you don't have to worry about it being artistic or being detailed. What we want is we want simple, eye-catching pictures that represent something. Okay, and how we do this is we actually use basic shapes. So we use lines, we use squiggles, we use triangles, squares, and circles. So everything you see can be broken down into basic shapes to make it simple. So if there's something you want to do, you can look for inspiration by Googling, I don't know, car icon or car clip art. That'll usually give you the simplest form of it. Um, but I'll give you some examples. So like with a squiggly line, obviously like a cloud is the easiest one, or a thought bubble, we'll cover it in frames as well. Uh, with a triangle, I've done a fish, what else? <laughs> I'll do it again. This is my favorite for triangle. As you can actually do like a little fish just using triangles. What else? Does anyone have something that they want to draw on their poster? People. We're going to do people next. You're ahead of the class. <laughs> a microphone. Cool. So if you think about a microphone, it's going to be a circle and then some kind of rectangle. You can kind of make it... Uh, uh, taper a bit and then you can maybe just do some cross hatching to show that you know that there's a mesh on it magnifying glass also circle so you're going to do a circle the simplest way is just do a circle and then kind of do um, a small rectangle and then a larger rectangle like that a mirror okay cool we're going to do that now I like to kind of on a magnifying glass add another circle in the middle so it gives it like a border and then I like to add like a little uh, thing like around the handle. So you can add little details if you want to make it look more fun uh, but basically at a basic level that's a circle and a rectangle. Okay, so brain I use like the squiggly, sorry I know was there, there was something else as well. My brains, I mean, you can draw it in different ways. I do kind of two lines, and then I do squiggly starting small and then getting bigger, and then I just try and draw it kind of symmetrical on the other side, and then I do little, like almost like brackets.
That for me is the quickest way. But you can also, I suppose, like stylize it and round it more so it's not so squiggly. You know, then it's almost like two semicircles. Scissors, okay? So scissors are pretty much circles, uh, maybe like oval, but you can do it as like a circle. So you're gonna do two circles, two circles, and then if you really want to do it simply, you're just going to do almost like a rectangle, rectangle. Sticky note. sticky note. Yeah, that's a good one. And you can also use a sticky note as like a frame to like border things, especially in our industry. It's like so nice. How I draw a sticky note is like a square. So I do a square, but then leave this corner open. Then you do a triangle pointing inwards like that and then you join those two edges. So it makes it look like the corner is folding up. So all paper, stuff like that, I give it that, that corner, because then it looks quite cute. So even if I want to do like a document, I'll always do that corner. Uh, like a notebook, uh, also just like a rectangle, um, and then you do almost like semicircles. Same with like a calendar, it would just be maybe more landscape. And you could put maybe the date, what's the date today? 18, so you could put like 18, give it like a little border, and then on top I'm just gonna give it semicircles. Pen, pencil? Markers. Markers. So it depends which markers, I'm actually gonna chat to you about markers. So these markers are my favorite, they're called Newland. I've put together um, some information. If you get serious about it, I would suggest this. Because Newland markers, they don't go through. Um, they specially made, they're made in Germany. I've been looking online. I don't know if you guys have an Indian supplier here. In South Africa, we're the same. I had to like import them. They're not that expensive. It's just getting them here, you know, is tough. So if you're drawing a marker, it depends. I usually draw like a, like a Newland marker, so I'll draw like a chisel tip top, I'll draw, you know, so I'll copy exactly kind of what this looks like, but that's quite complicated, right? And then it's got a circle. That's kind of what makes it very unique as a circle. But you could just do like a very simple marker, you could just do like a, any kind of top, it would almost be like two rectangles and then another rectangle. The border, yeah. I'm going to chat about that. So usually the last thing I do with posters is I add a border around the whole poster. And then you can have fun with adding little details to the corners. Um, and that kind of completes your poster. It makes it look... So those uh, pictures that you are drawn on the bottom, no, no, no. Yeah. So it was they, supposed to be like a, like a Polaroid photo. But I think it would have looked more like a photo if I'd put a mountain and a sun. Easy. And that's the thing. So think about it in basic shapes. Think about a triangle, a square, a circle. Um, and then the other thing is, it's like learning a new language. So you have to just kind of practice and think about it. Think about it. And the, the best way to do it, how I did it also, is when I want to make a poster. I'm like, how do I draw a okay, lean coffee? What's the easiest way for me to draw a coffee or a mug? And it's basically a half circle, a line underneath, and then almost like a half circle handle. But until you're trying to do it, until you're saying, what's the easiest way to draw a mug or a teacup or a, you know, so I kind of learned by doing, but you can also challenge yourself and get a notebook and actually just say, okay, how would I draw strategy? How would I draw agile? How would I, and just practice, like learning a new language. Okay. 
Cool, okay, so that's pictures. I wanna just cover people, because then I'm gonna give you some time to add some stuff to your, to your posters. So, so people, um, what I've tried to do with my posters is I've tried to draw in lots of different styles. I don't usually do that. I usually stick to one style. Um, but I want to show you that there are lots of like easy ways of, of doing things. So people, for those of you who are in the sketch noting one, it's okay to do stick people. Okay, especially if you like drawing live in front of people. Don't try and do like artistic complicated stuff. Okay, so stick people are okay. This is kind of maybe the, what you're thinking when you think stick people uh, or stick woman. Um, but I say, say stick people, not stick men, because they can be women also. Um, but actually a quick easy way to make them look more substantial and more, uh, you know, uh, human is to give them a body. So if you do the head, uh, I always do the head first, so you do the head. You can do almost like a semicircle. This is like a little like chest person. Uh, then two lines. I just do a little loop for feet. And then the arms. And the best thing to do is if you're not sure, then just model on yourself. You know, how would, so arms, if they want to go up. Oh, it's not us. Okay, so if you want to put arms up, they would go something like that. So you can kind of just play around. You can also do a bean person. So similar, but the body is a bean. He's angry. Um, you can do square, so kind of like block people. So you can do the body as a block. Uh, if you're doing block people, you put the legs on the corners, and then you put the arms on the top corners. So the block people are actually sometimes the easiest because you've got a reference point for, for the limbs. Um, you can even do people kind of, you can add movement. So if you're doing like a block person, you could do someone running. So you would say, if I'm running, how would it be? Okay, the arm would go forward like this. There would be an arm behind. The leg would come forward, and one leg might be going back. Okay, so it's, you know, it's easy to kind of add a bit of a body and add that movement. It's always nice to kind of also put them in context if you can, so give them some ground if you can. Um, otherwise, you'll see later you could add like a shadow underneath, just so they're not floating in space. You know, so you can kind of add, depending on how your shadows go, you could, with like a lighter color, just put them in context. Okay, I'm gonna teach you something that I love. So if you're drawing a crowd of people, it's like an M, another M, another M, and then just give them heads. Okay, and then you've got a crowd of people. I like to also kind of give them a bottom, like a line or something, just to finish them off. And then you can draw kind of lots. So remember it's a representation. As long as people kind of know what you're doing, it's okay. It doesn't have to be art. Um, Okay, cool. So are you ready to add pictures and people to your posters? Okay. Awesome. I'll give you five minutes. You guys are quite quick. Or maybe seven minutes. This is... Oh, I love it. For example, it. if my section is ask me anything, right? Yes. How do I visualize it? My challenge is. Um, so this Thank you. 
think they need to be doing that and take the So what sometimes we have to do Yes. One would be like, you know, if you want to issue as collaboration, we can draw some groups of people. But then how can you visualize the, the connections between people? Like, you know, Is there collaborating together? Mm. I mean, Sorry, carry on. About two more minutes, everyone. Thank you. 
important for us as we have conversations with community members. Thank you. So again, we have more than a couple of minutes left. So Scott, if you would finish, we'd always use for our students. So let's finish with our dynamic music strategy tip off the start and then our students. And I think how many have had it? How many have had it before? How many have had it? Yeah, you know, I mean that's what it's kind of all about. You know, I think it's been fun. Okay. Well, is that the one? How's it going? One more minute. Okay, I feel like we could do this all day, but let's move on because I want to finish, uh, finish the content. I'm loving seeing all the pictures and creativity coming out. Okay, so we're going to talk quickly about flags and frames. Just move around if you can't see, sorry. Usually in these kind of contexts, right, you'd use posters maybe in smaller groups. It's hard to do at conferences because it's quite big. Uh, but usually with teams, this is big enough. So uh, just think about your context. Okay, so frames and flags. I've done flags as a completely separate one for posters because I feel like you know, the most basic form of a poster, you can do a title, a flag, or a title, a picture, a flag, a border around it, and it looks beautiful. You know, so it can be very simple. Um, there was kind of a comment, so the order that I've done it in is the order that I build posters. So I think about my layout, I put my text. I haven't yet put borders or anything put my text, add pictures or people, then I do flags or frames, and then I'll put a border around the whole thing. Then we're gonna do, oh, we still need to do color and shading, okay. So I'm gonna kind of speed it up a bit here. So the important thing with frames and, and flags is that you're gonna do your text first. That's why we do our text first, okay? So you've got your text. The easiest flag to do is a rectangle. And then you're going to put kind of a shorter rectangle behind it. This length here is going to be the same as this length here. 
So if you can imagine, it's the same flag, it's just sitting behind. So I'm going to leave kind of a gap at the bottom because then it gives an illusion of it being behind. So almost like this, uh, this width, right, should be the same. That's kind of the trick. Uh, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to join this front corner with that back corner, like that. And I've got a flag. Okay, one of my favorites is um, these squiggly ones. So let's imagine you're making a poster. You've got your text, you've got your heading. Okay, we haven't added borders or anything yet. You're going to add a little picture. Let's say we're going to add a little uh, light bulb. Okay. When I add my border or my flag, that picture can sit in front of it. That's why I wait to put those borders around. So now I'm going to put a flag. I'm not going to cross the picture. I'm going to leave a space. When I get to the picture, I'm going to stop. And then when I get to the other side of the picture, I'm going to finish it. If you do the border first, then sometimes you don't have space to add pictures in that. So if you've got a border, then your picture can't, you know, then it kind of overlaps. Okay. Another nice flag like this one, it's like a backwards S, a line, a forwards S, obviously as big as your text is, down on each side, another line parallel, try to keep it even. Uh, and then here again, same width as your front. And then you just join the back there. Easy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's practice, though. You know, that, when I learned that, I was like, oh, wow. Like, it's actually, you know, if you know the process, it's not too hard. Um, Okay, frames, um, again, you would do your, uh, your, your text first, uh, and the reason for that is, um, you know, let's do, for example, like a speech bubble. So a speech bubble can be a frame, it can be a border. Uh, so I'm going to do a little triangle, and then I'm going to do a circle around the text. And the reason we do that is because if you do your container or your frame first, especially if you're kind of drawing live, you're going to be standing there and you're like, okay, so today we're going to have a conversation. Conver, and then you hit here and you're like, oh, say, sh you're trying to fit it in. Okay. So your size of your frame or your container depends on the size of your text. So you do your text first. Okay. Uh, you can do even just like a square, a rounded uh, square, a circle. All of those are containers. Uh, you can do fancier things like frames. I would do like a rectangle. I would do circles on the edges, circles halfway through uh, that long side, and then I would just kind of join them like that to give you like a, a fancy frame. And then you can pretend there's like a little nail in the wall and you can give some string. Every time I leave a gap between something, it implies that it's behind, you know, so it looks like now there's a gap, so the frame is sitting on front, in front of it. Okay. Happy. I think a lot of you have already add board, added borders in that, but if you haven't, then now's the time to kind of add borders. Remember where you have a picture, bless, bless you, uh, where you have a picture, you're going to cut your frame. So if you've got text, and you've got a picture somewhere, when you add your border, you're not going to touch your picture. You're going to just leave a little space like that. Okay. Okay, cool. And then, um, then I'm going to move on to color and, and shading. Do you guys need time to add some borders? Yes. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes to add some borders.
Okay. Okay, awesome. We're going to move on to um to color and shading. I'm just going to run through the steps again with you super quick. Um, and then I'm hoping we'll have time, I'll just do like stationery and tips and that to close it out. Uh, just so you have the information if you're interested. Okay, so you would start with some kind of heading. Here's a tip. When you're drawing on a flip chart, don't stand here because you actually can't see. You can't see uh, what's happening. Don't be afraid to stand in front of it, right? The only thing is then you just have to be quick. You can't be covering it all the time. So you're going to move in front, right, and then step to the side. I'm right-handed, so I stand on this side. If you're left-handed, you'll stand on the other side. Okay, so you're going to do a heading. Oops. See, I've even joined one there. Okay, heading, text, text. You see also how I move my body. So I'm not trying to stand here and write down here. So you've got to almost follow your marker because that's the most accurate that you'll be. Don't be standing here and trying to draw like that. It's very difficult. Okay, so you've got text. Then you're going to add uh, your pictures. I'll just draw a light bulb. Okay, so you add a picture. Um, Coffee cup. Just put a smiley face emoji. Okay. Then we're going to add kind of uh, either frames or flags. So you notice how because my picture's there, I stop and then I start again on the other side. I don't go through. That's why I do this order. Okay. And then I'll add... The flag at the back. I'm going to add containers here. I'll just keep it simple. Okay. Okay. And then, obviously, you might have more text, right? Or you might kind of leave space blank to write uh, while you talk. So if you have more text, you'll also contain it or whatever. So you add whatever you want. Then what I do right at the end, and in your booklets, we've run out of time, but in your booklets, they're cool little like corner details. So for example, if I want to make it look like there's a pin, I do a circle and a line going inwards. Or I could do like sticky tape. I'll just do kind of like a rectangle diagonal in the corner. Um, so you can add almost like little uh, details in the corner. And then I add to finish the poster off, I add a border around the whole thing. 
So I'm going to add a line. If I've done a corner, I'm going to leave a gap. Now watch her. When I draw, again, I'm not trying to draw a line like this. I'm following it, and I'm just dropping to try and draw as straight as possible. So it's stuff like that just to, you know, people are like, I can't draw straight. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, but it's that kind of thing to, you know, if I try to stand here and draw, it is, it's harder. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a light gray, Again, kind of a thick chisel tip. And we're going to, so notice what I do usually is I draw everything in black. Because then I can decide on colors later. If you're drawing in lots of colors, it just becomes more complex. So I draw everything in black or a dark color. Okay. Hmm? Oh yeah, sorry, I understand there wasn't enough black markers here. So, um, okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, shading, so shading is just a light gray. If you can imagine the sun is here in the top corner on the right, then the shadows would be everything opposite that. Okay, so if the light is there, everything kind of this side is going to get a shadow. And you can never really have too many shadows. I like it because it makes it look 3D. Just pick a gray that's like not too dark. So everything opposite that, so everything kind of on the left hand side can get a shadow. You can also do shadows that are like sitting under it. I find it gets quite uh, complicated. So just kind of pick which side you want the light to come from and then just draw a light gray on the opposite side of everything. Okay, I'm gonna cover a uh, color as well because uh, it's quite interesting, and then hopefully you'll have time if you want to quickly practice. So I use, I'll, I'll tell you about this as well, this is a Newland, uh, it's like a pastel, a chalk pastel, or you can get like a big thick wax uh, block. So the reality is you can't sit and color everything in with a marker. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a lot of color quickly. Um, so what I would generally do is I would take kind of like a yellow or any color and I would outline my container in a color, in a marker, but I'm not trying to cover, color the whole thing in with a marker because A, it's going to take too long and B, it might also smudge or do something funny. So anything I want color, I'm going to add a, a color border. Then I'm going to find the same color in a, like a chalk, I use the chalk uh, pastel. Again, I'm not gonna color the whole thing. I'm gonna kind of uh, draw a line around the edges. And then I'm gonna blend it. So you can actually use a tissue uh, or you can use your fingers. So I'm gonna blend it inwards. So you see how quick that is, instead of having to color everything in. And it kind of gives a nice, almost like glowing effect. So you can do the same with your pictures. So do a border and a marker of the color, and then find a chalk and do it uh, in the same color. What you can also do, which is quite fun, is like if your whole post has a border, you can actually do like a chalk marker, I mean chalk uh, crayon, and then just blend it out. So it makes it look like it's almost glowing from the back. It's a lot. I know it's a lot, but a lot of it is just kind of having the right equipment and then just playing around. So you now know kind of the process um, to follow and then you can practice. Okay, I think we're almost out of time. If you want, there are pastels here that you can uh, play with or do you want to wrap up? Okay, so if you want, there are pastels here that you can come and try out. Okay, I'll give, let's do one, two minutes of this and then I'll wrap up quick. And they're also wet wipes because it...
Yeah, these are mine. Just please bring yeah, them back. We'll give it back. <laughs> Hmm? I wouldn't. Okay, I wish we had another two or three hours, but we're out of time. I just wanted to show you super quick. If you are interested, so um, there's some tips here. So if you create a really beautiful template, don't throw it away. Take it and you can trace it. So what I do is if I make it and I love my heading and all of that and I need it again, I'll take it, I'll put it behind and I'll trace it. Your guy's paper might be a bit thicker though, so you must check to see if it'll work. But I often retrace if I have a template. Um, if you make a mistake, you can use a white label. That's kind of like your typics. So if I do make a mistake, I'll cover it with paper and then from a distance you won't see. Again, with your guys' flip chart, I don't know if it's exactly white, so you'll have to test. Okay, um, I'll share this with you so you can kind of look through it. I think look locally and see what materials you have and play around with it, but my favorite is the Newland because it is refillable. You can buy nibs to replace the nibs so um, it'll basically last you a lifetime. Also the black permanent marker, these ones don't bleed through. So I would kind of recommend, if you are serious about it, uh, having a look if you can get them. They are kind of like industry standard. Um, and then I put together almost like what I re would recommend as a starter kit. You don't need 30 colors and 50 everything. Uh, you can get away with just a really good black marker a good gray marker. I like yellow because it's very forgiving. It blends well and it's bright, but you can pick one color and then some kind of either pastel or, or wax. But I will share this with you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. I know it's a lot, but well done for getting in there and getting practical, and I wish you all the best on your, your flip chart journey. I will take photos of all of these and I'll put them in this deck and I'll share it on uh, Conf Engine so that you have all the info. Um, and then also feel free, here's some other like books and things that are, that are really good. Um, 
yeah, so this is basically just a whole bunch of information I'm going to share with you. But feel free to tag me if you do make posters. I'd love to see your journey. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. If you don't mind, could you bring the stationery forward? Then it saves a lot of time. Thank you.